Hello friends, welcome again. So this is the place where we had left our earlier video just after opening the practice image sets in the form of the FITS files. So it is from here where we will be resuming our next part of our twist with Astrometrica. So as you can see, these four sets of FITS file from one image set is open on our system. And as I have already told you, that yes, we can invert the color of the image also. And personally, I have never been inclined to this type of coloring. So, I take this type of image color in my personal recommendation. But nonetheless, what I will be doing here is, I am not going to analyze this image set because there are 10 practice image sets available over the Isaac website provided by the Isaac authorities. So, utilizing one to explain to you will uh, diminish your own experiences. So, instead of using these practice sets, what I will do is, I will just close these practice sets and I will open one of the other image sets that was a part of my team campaign. So, where I will again go to file and before doing anything, I will just do loading of the image. I will just go to the place where those particular image sets are there and here they come. These are the image sets in the zip files which were originally in the zip format and I had unzipped those files and these are four set of fits file again provided in one image set. And with the help of control A, I will select all the four files and I will just open them on the system. So as you can see, they are open in my personal recommended uh, coloring of the images. If they are not, you can still go to this invert image and you can invert the coloring. So these are four image sets and I am just keeping them aligned in a beautiful manner so that all the four names are visible to you. And now as a customary check, what we have to do is, first of all, we will have to go for the astrometric data reduction. The green colored icon which you see, you can go over it, you click over it and then the astrometric data reduction will start. Otherwise, you just go to the astrometry tab by the side of file, edit and astrometry and then you go to the data reduction or else you can choose over your keyboard as you can see the shortcut combination keys, control plus A for the data reduction. So what I will do is, I will just click over this green color button and then these coordinates they tend to appear over your screen. Now what these actually these uh, things that have appeared in front of you are they give to you the object that you have to be associating with in the sky. If you click over these three dots now it provides an entire list Ceres, Pallas, Juno, Vesta and all the different type of the objects and they are about 10,000 or even more in number and if you go on browsing and browsing they go on increasing and increasing. So don't go for the selection of a particular object or filtering because here we are selecting just the general part of the sky. So just cancel it. Now here comes the right ascension and declination. This is the intelligent part and a advantage of FITS file. Once you open these files you tend to get courtesy to the software the right ascension and the declination and the north or the south which part of the sky you have seen. So entire description of the sky which has been monitored by the observing telescope or by the observing instrument it is directly displayed into the sky. For here the right ascension of this particular sector of the image that we are provided with is 4 hours 40 minutes 45.8 seconds and the declination is 18 degrees 17 minutes 32 seconds towards the north. Now, one more thing. What is this right ascension and declination? I won't go into the such a huge detail of right ascension and declination, but in a layman's language, I would just like to explain to you what right ascension and declination they actually mean. If you see the globe or the model of the earth, you have got latitudes and longitudes and we have been studying these in our geography classes and the astronomy or even the physics classes since long. So, it is an analog 
or analogy if we tend to draw towards the celestial sphere in the celestial globe in the sky so we can say equivalent to the latitude and longitude we have got right ascension and declination for stars and planets that are present in our celestial sphere in our sky this analogy may not be cent percent correct but in order to just give you an idea you can just equate right ascension and declination to the concept of latitudes and longitudes in the sky now what next now after you have clicked over this green tab of astrometric data reduction or control a you have done then this box appears so next you have to do without tinkering with any of these things without changing any of these coordinates just click okay and once you have clicked okay and extracting object tab it appears in front of you sometimes this cursor may turn round extracting objects may show you not responding but don't worry it all depends upon the speed of the network you are facing with so uh, the faster the network speed and the faster the processing happens it depends upon your system also the faster it will read the reference star data as being provided in the repositories by this particular software as you can see the reference star data is being read and sometimes this reference star match error they also tend to occur and this particular software is not able to match the reference stars on its own so what you have to do is you have to exclusively go to this automatic reference star match and let it be default don't change any values click over this automatic part and then make okay and after you have done an okay of the things a sub small table it tends to appear in front of your screen now what actually this small table it depicts it depicts in front of you before uh, the data before doing uh, any sort of an astrometry all the basics of the data they are being present in front of you so what we get to see is there are a few stars in this table and the reference stars that are to be associated with your sky lining and all these things they are particularly given in this format so we will discuss somewhere down the line later on about this data reduction results so what you have to do is you just close this part and after closing this part what you tend to see is i would just zoom in a few things for you i am just zooming in with the help of this plus tab this zoom and all and so uh, again i will just zoom it in for you and now you can see yes now this entire resolution it has been adjusted properly for this screen now here you can see there are a few dots with blue circle there are a few dots with green circle and also there can be sometimes a few dots with yellow circles as well now let me show you in inverted format what this circles they tend to look like it it becomes this sort of an appearance now let me revert it back by inverting the image now these green circles they are the good reference stars the yellow circles which fortunately are not present they are the bad reference stars i will explain to you somewhere in detail what is the meaning of a good reference star and a bad reference star and all together there are a few blue circles as well so these are those stars or those objects which have remained static in at least two of the frames so those objects they are being represented in this blue uh, green and yellow sort of the stars so i am now taking it back to the normal adjustment now this is a basic data reduction what you tend to get now your figure has been refined now comes the next step in the next step what you have to do is you have to do a known object overlay and after clicking over the known object overlay again a scan of this particular sector will be done by the sky there may be a few objects which may be known to you known to us all together since long previously also and at the same time they may appear in this sector of the sky moving as well so in order to differentiate between earlier known objects 
from the unknown we have to do this known object overlay and as you can see after this known object overlay has been done a, an object by the name of k 1 5 x by 4 l in the bracket 20.4 in red color it appears in front of your screen so what it actually is now let me zoom it out to this object again let me adjust it let me zoom it on let me again zoom it for the sake of more clarity and i hope that now you may be able to see it or perhaps this type of a zoom is more so to the liking now here you can clearly see now this 20.4 it represents the magnitude of the object and k15 xy 4l is the nomenclature the designation that has been assigned to this object earlier when it was found so this is one of the objects which have been known to us and previously in order to differentiate and we will you will see it that next time when after we do the next procedure of blinking this object will also start moving so in order to differentiate between a previously known object and an unknown object you have to perform this known object overlay now so we have done two steps up till now first one is the astrometric data reduction the second one is a known object overlay and now we are exclusively going to use the blink facility mechanism with the help of this control b so before using the blink facility let me reduce the entire to this format and now i am going to use the blink facility mechanism and courtesy to this blink facility mechanism a fifth window will open and you will get to see what is the result so i will continue with the blink facility mechanism in the next part of the video thank you thanks a lot